Hashtag not sponsored. But would gladly take sponsorship from Crush Grape. If you're listening. Let's make it happen. Martin wearing a purple shirt. Bards in the basement. Yes, we do have official merch. In case you didn't know, I think there's a link somewhere in the channel. Something. If not, I'll uh, forget to do that. But what's going on, everybody? This is Rich from Bards in the Basement. Uh, welcome back to Bard Babbles. This is episode number nine, and it is October 23rd, 2020. See, I have it written on my BB9. Anyways, um, that was going to be BB8, I guess. Should have had that a Star Wars episode instead of a concert episode. But I digress, and look where we are. I'm going to have to put down my window for a hot second here. I'm going to walk in by. Will be able to hear me? Okay, cool. Thanks. I cannot see with these foggy ass windows. Anyways, welcome back to Bard Babbles. We are here. It is Friday, Friday. Just a gentle reminder anyone who is watching these and keeping track, I think there is maybe one of you. So thank you, fan, that I have. I don't know who you are. Uh, but thank you, fan. Uh, for anybody, any future people watching this, future people, uh, there will be a two day break as it is my weekend and I plan on doing things this weekend that do not involve driving from work at 7 o'clock in the morning. So, here's where we are. We are in the car. I actually had something I wanted to talk about this uh, Bard's Babble, Bard Babbles. I wrote that on my hand too because uh, sometimes I forget. So today I want to talk to you about D&D games, and I don't know if I've gotten into this before because this is the ninth Bard Babbles. I'm starting to forget what I've talked about, so if I repeat myself, just like, I'm sorry. But I want to talk about my next D&D campaign, not the current D&D campaign, but the next D&D campaign that I will be DMing. Uh, right now we are playing the Magical Academy Clicksworth. Uh, which is fun. There's a few episodes of that on the YouTube, and then we stopped recording them because they were so few and far between, and then bringing all my equipment, and at the time I was working a job, I was working like 70 hours a week, so like, sometimes I was struggling to get there on time or at all, so we just ended up stopped recording it, but we have been playing that game for over two years strong with the people. Again, nothing's really regular at all. The same group I played with last weekend, so, uh, but normally I, I DM the Magic School campaign, which I think I have talked about now, I think about it. Um, I did have a campaign also that I was playing with my stepsister, or, you know, my stepsister and her husband, uh, where we were on, like, a swamp, back woodsy swamp, old magic Louisiana Bayou town, um, and they started going evil in that campaign, and then we, uh, COVID happened, so we haven't played since. Um... So I was DMing both those games, and then I'm DMing a game with my wife's friends from her work. Um, so I was DMing a game with them. I DMed for that one on Tuesday. I'm surprised I didn't talk about that. I think Wednesday was my rant. That's why. We did play D&D the night before. I was very tired. Um, very tired. Did not get any. Did not get a nap in before before work that day. I like went straight home, packed my lunch, and then left. So, um, there's that. So, but anyways, the new D&D campaign that I'm, it's percolating, percolating you could say, you know, how coffee does, <laughs> in my head just slowly dripping thoughts, thoughts down, um, is a D&D pirate campaign. Uh, you're like, oh, you're just so basic. Yeah, well, I've, I've never really run one. I've run, like, a three-shot pirate adventure that was going to a specific place. They just happened to be on a boat for most of the time. And they were decked by some water things, and that just a lot, too, because, you know, the thing I had them get was, you know, I didn't have much back thought or anything into it, so I kind of, you know, realized after the first session, I'm like, we could be done after two of these. <clears throat> so... But I want to make an entire campaign. But I want it to be... I want it to feel somewhat episodic. I want it to feel like... Originally, this is what Glicksorth was supposed to be. Glicksorth was supposed to be a, you know, drop in when you can, drop out, you know. If anybody needs to not be there, you know, it's cool. We'll have classes end each session. So, you know, we're not, we don't have any lingering campaign things. And it got to be really boring for the players. 
and my players are like, we just go to class, and some of them aren't that fun, you know, I'm trying to find ways to, like, throw combat in there, so I gave them, like, an adventuring class, and then the adventuring teacher, like, on the weekends, we're taking them out, you know, try to help them make gold, because they wanted to make gold, because there's a magic, a magic shop, you know, just in town outside the school, not Hogsmeade, um, but then I'm like, oh shit, how did they make gold? They're poor college kids. Like, Ugh. So it became kind of like a struggle. And it ended up having to be a little bit more linear because of all the extra stuff I had to add to try to get them adventure and to try to get them gold. So now it is really linear. And I've had players miss a game here and there, but we just act like their character's still there. You know, they're not like, oh, you know, you don't go with us today on our adventure because we don't know where it's going to end. Because sometimes a player won't be there and we'll go and then I'll be like, hey, I've got an idea for a thing, like on the spot. And then I'll take them out somewhere and then we'll get a couple fights in and then we'll end up, you know, ending the session. And then we come back and how awkward it would be to have that player sit out for another half a session until we finish up what's going on in this little maroon island. You know, so I'm just saying, there's reasons. There are, there are reasons for the things we do. So... Uh... But anyways, uh, the pirate campaign. The pirate campaign, I want it to be sort of episodic. I don't want it to be necessarily linear in the things. I mean, obviously, I like linear time. I don't like jumping around from time to time to time. But I don't want it to feel like it has to be one major overarching story. I want it to feel like a bunch of little adventures that maybe there is a big overarching world conflict that my players just happen to be around. Like, I don't even care if they get involved or not. Like, the thing, the way I'm kind of envisioning this, the way I'm kind of imagining it is, you know, there are pirate lords, there are countries with navies, and the navies try to protect their coastline and give a small amount of protection to merchants pirates try to rob from the merchants and try to, you know, depending on how chaotic they are, they could try to take out the navy just because that's, you know, some pirate, well, some, some of them will be like that. So I'm kind of imagining this just, um, it's like vast, vast ocean, a lot of, like, a lot of islands, a lot of places they could explore, and I don't want to get too bogged down with trying to design the whole world, because, you know, that's how you sink into a hole, and then when you can't figure out anything, your things start to become too derivative of other things, you give up, and I will say I have heavily borrowed, not stolen, heavily borrowed from the Pirates of the Caribbean, not only are the first, like, two movies, first movie and parts, and the second and third movie, I'd say, just, like, the locations and the set designs, you know, and the ships themselves, the way they run, the way, you know, the attitude of the sailors, giving a good, like, you know, good idea of scope. Like, you, you really can tell the scope of what everything is supposed to be like. Um, I like that from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I also like the third movie, one scene. I love the scene where all the pirate captains get together and they throw in their trinkets and they're like, you know, this is our meeting. I wish I could remember more of it, but I only saw it like twice. And I saw that scene one additional time since that movie has come out. Um, so it's been like 10 years. Um, I love the concept of having like this brotherhood of pirates, this like, they might kill each other out on the, on the ocean, but when big shit's happening, they come together and they're like, yo, let's put away our shit for a minute, we gotta decide if this is what's happening, you know, and I kind of like that, I like that idea, I like that idea of a tenuous relationship between pirate captains, and I think I kind of planned seven, I think seven was a good, I think I was stealing that from uh, the Ghost of Saltmarsh that said they had seven pirate princes or something like that. But then they don't go into much detail about any of them, so I'm just sitting there going, hey, I don't know who these people are, so I'm going to make my own. And I'm going to make the pirate princes, princes 
and princesses. There are some some female ones, and they're different races. And what I was trying not to do, which is kind of like what I generally do, is I go, okay, this land, this crew, this people, yada yada, is based on this race, and this race is, you know, stereotypical thing that this race does, you know. I think everybody kind of does that, you know. It's like gnomes, they tinker with stuff. Yay. You know, elves, they're ele they're eloquent, you know. They're, you know, they've been around for years and, you know, they they know deep lore magic, you know, that people don't see anymore. And, you know, stuff like that. Like, it's like, you know, I, I take that basis and what I did was I tried to make tried to make pirate gangs kind of initially around races and then and then I started molding them into ideas so I had um, so I had orcs originally as um, you know and, and again I, t I took I took a lot of inspiration from the Pirates of the Caribbean films so I had orcs that were supposed to be the, the African American slaves not that I think that that needs to be a comparison it's just in every single thing that I've read about D and D, you know, orcs are always enslaved by someone else or is trying to enslave someone else. But what I wanted to have is I wanted to have this group of orcs that were freed. You know, they fought for their freedom, they left, they overthrew their captors, and then I was like, why am I pigeonholing this into orcs? It should be anyone that's been any race, any any setting, well, my setting, my setting, uh, any race, any continent, any any city that they have been they have been sold into slavery or brought up into slavery, and they've escaped and they wanted a new life, um, and they wanted to be free. Or if you know, not even that. I mean, if you're like if. The way I see this is, if you want to be a free man, that is what this pirate, you know, this pirate group will do. Um, the way I'm kind of envisioning them is, everyone splits the pot. Everyone splits, you know, the booty. You split it all. Like, the only thing is the captain of the ships get kicked up just a little bit more just a little maybe even like one percent more you know they get their you know the same amount that everyone else gets and then maybe they get like one percent of you know one or I don't even say one percent more but maybe like I was gonna say one percent from everybody but writing the numbers that would actually be a lot um you know maybe they get five percent more just because they are the captain of the ship and they're keeping all this stuff together and then maybe the you know the officers get like two percent more and maybe they vote the officers in you know oh, excuse me. so anyone on the ship you know maybe they vote officers in every year you know I'd have to say that you know trying to make it seem like, you know, it's fair and this was something that they would come up with. So kicking, like, you know, an extra 5% to the captain. Maybe it's his boat, you know. The captain owns the boat, so the captain, you know, the captain is pretty much lending his boat so he gets an extra 5% or whatever the kick-up is. And the officers, again, get, like, an extra 1% or 2% of the of the uh, the gold and everything, and everybody contributes as equally as they can, you know. And this is just a real free, like I I want it to be kind of a radical idea in this piracy game. Like I really want it to be like a whoa, you did what now? And I'm I'm gonna present several, if not all, of these pirate princes princes. I keep wanting to say princesses. Uh, these pirate princes. And I'm gonna let the players choose who they want to sail under. And uh, I'm gonna present them with different, you know, in different ways. I'm gonna try to present all of them to the players within the first couple sections. You know, if not directly, then at least by reputation. 
Uh, and I want them to choose. Or if they want to go solo, I'm going to, you know, let them go solo. You know, maybe they don't have to be under a pirate fence. You know, they wouldn't have that sort of protection if they needed it if something bigger happened. But then they wouldn't have to kick up to anybody. <clears throat> so, I mean, these are some ideas I've been floating around for a while in my head about this. And, you know, I want there to be like a Tartuga-type city. But I want it to be owned owned, you know, pirated huh, by one of the other pirate princes and their crew. Um, so this crew would be more like a purveyor of goods, you know, they would be the, uh, the fences for a lot of the people, you know, they would be, you know, not that all pirates don't do this, but these, these pirates like specialize in that. They specialize, they're the, uh, the hoarders from Sea of Thieves, you know, they're like, hey, you know, we know where the good stuff is, you know, this is, you know, don't, don't do that crap, you're, you know, you're paddling, this is what you want here, right? but I jumped off now, I was getting brave, anyways, um, these are the ones that, that specialize in this kind of thing, and these are the pirates that, um, that established this base as an operation, you know, for trafficking in some of their stuff, and, excuse me, um, but they're also like, you know, they're merchants, so, you know, they've got several places that people can stay, and everything gets kicked back up to this one pirate prince, you know, everything, you know, everyone has a cut that they have to pay to the next person above them, and if they don't pay, you know, they'll, they'll kill you, like, on the spot, very, like, uh, in Critical Role, they went to, they went to an island, and kind of like this, where the one guy was in charge of everything, and it was like his crew, and I like that. So, I'm just kind of trying to expand upon it a little bit more. I don't know how much my Mammers has put into it. Um, I haven't read Wild Mount or anything else, you know, cover to cover yet, so. But my idea was that for, for that to be one of them, and that would be a crap and a cracker. Uh, that would be one of one of the main places that I, I'm trying to develop for them to see. Uh, let's see, what else? What else have I really got set in stone here? Uh, using the Ghost of Saltmarsh uh, campaign book, I have began trying to refine ship-to-ship -ship combat. I don't necessarily like the rules as they are. Uh, I think the ship should be able to do more, and I think people on the ships should be able to do more, so... I'm kind of working on tweaking that at the moment. And I think ship-to-ship -ship combat should be fun, it should be interesting, it should be multi-layered, multi-faceted. You should be able to have people that are literally just running around casting spells, you know, and then if your hull is going to potentially get, you know, a fireball cast at it, maybe there should be hulls that are specifically made to endure that. So that's one thing I'm going to start tweaking, start looking to see if there's any guides online or anything to see if we can kind of make that a little bit more fluid. Um, but yeah. So those are my ideas. That's my time. I am now home. And I just want to say thank you guys for watching so much. I hope you all have a great weekend. Uh, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bard underscore rich. Uh, I'll probably be streaming something this weekend. And uh, in the comments below, if you want, um, let me know. Um, what kind of a character would you be in a pirate campaign? You know, make it as goofy, make it as fun. Uh, maybe I'll get some ideas and steal them for NPCs. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch you next time.